Hi guys, welcome to the studio. My name is Allison Jensen and I am the owner of the Orange Diesel School of Art. And we are a children's art studio. We have two locations in the Kansas City area. One is here in Liberty where I am at right now. It's actually the closest one to my house. And then one is just across the way still in the Northland over in Platte Woods. And we are in the throes of summer. I had somebody ask me today if summer was busier or if summer was um, slower. And I said, summer is different. <laughs> it's just different. It's not any busier. We don't have any evening classes. Um, most days or most weeks, we don't have any classes on Fridays. Um, but, it's, but it's different where I have um, new people, which is so exciting, that can't come during the school year because, you know, their school year is so crazy, but they can make it here for a summer class. So we got new people and lots of communications, and it changes every single day. Whereas uh, during the school year, I may do clay for the entire month of October, and it's going to be a four-part, four-week class um, in the summertime. Every day, every week is something new, and it's it's like a finished product every single class, with the exception of like two classes. But um, yeah, it's just a lot on our end. On our end, it's a lot because it's constantly changing, and it feels like it's in a really fast pace. So um, we're always really happy when fall rolls back around. Today we're going to do some origami. So the supplies that you'll need today, um, I have my giant box of origami paper, which obviously nobody knew how to open. So I've got origami paper. If you don't have origami paper, any lightweight square paper will work. So I brought this one up. You can see um, we've got stashes of uh, scrapbook paper, which lovely people donate to us, and we adore those people. I pulled this out of our scrapbook paper, um, and it is 12 by 12 and it's really lightweight, so it's not the cardstock kind. You can actually cut four six by six squares out of a 12 by 12 square of scrap of paper. So if you don't have origami paper, um, this works as well. You can use plain white typing paper, that's cool. Or um, I think this was like $7 on Amazon. So if you want, I can post the link. It's solid colors, like it's nothing fancy. Um, it, it's printed on both sides. So unlike your um, scrap of paper that doesn't have printing on this side, um, my origami paper is colored on both sides, so I kind of like that. Maybe a little harder for my video. I actually looked for something with white backing so you could see better, but I couldn't find it. So um, we're going to do three things today. We're going to learn how to fold a paper crane, my personal favorite, how to fold this fun little balloon, which is the kid's favorite, so you can play catch with it, and how to fold a paper flower, which is probably the trickiest one, okay? Now... The age recommendation for this, I would say um, anywhere in that middle elementary and up. It's really going to work that fine motor, um, and it's going to take some practice. So if they're not practiced at paper folding, there's going to be a learning curve here because you have to figure out how to use those muscles and make those creases. And so um, they're not going to, they may not look like this the first time. And you may not want to start with something this complicated. Um, there's some really great um, origami tutorials for kids um, that are younger or just starting out like um, my daughter used to make the paper dog one which is where you just fold it into a triangle and then flop his ears down and it's done and, and that way you can practice those creases and you can practice lining up those edges which becomes really important when you're making as many folds as this okay um, so we'll get started here and I'm gonna pull you down closer so you can see what I'm doing the other tool that I have with me is just a ballpoint pen and I'm gonna use that um, in a couple different instances, I won't use it, um, actually I might use it in all of them, maybe not in the crane, but definitely in the other two, just to kind of open up an area where I need, my fingers don't work. Move my coffee mug, move my scrapbook paper, origami paper, we'll use orange. And the very first one we're going to do is the crane, okay, and uh, this one is the first one I think I ever learned. My third grade year, you guys, was like filled with making cranes. That's like, that's all we did, it felt like. And my best friend was from um, Japan, and Rieko taught me how to make paper cranes. And that year, we decided that we were going to make a thousand of these. And we did. So, and then Rieko's mom strung them all, and we made this beautiful wall hanging out of paper cranes. All right, so here we go. We're going to take our square you got to have a perfect square, and the very first step we're going to do is we're going to go corner to corner, and we're going to fold it into a triangle. 
Now, one of the mistakes the kids make, well, is they'll, they'll fold from the back and they'll try to crease first. And that's not what we want to do. We want to fold from the front and you're going to line up your edges first. So we line up that corner and we come over here and we line up this corner. We make sure everything's good before we come flatten this out. Okay. So if they learn to fold from the front instead of folding from the back, it'll really help them out. And then this kind of creasing step is really important in, in everything that we do. So when you teach the kids the origami, tell them to pay attention to their corners because you always want them lined up and making sure, is this one lined up too? That's what we want. And there's going to be times that it's not perfect, but that's really going to help it be successful, okay? So that's our very first fold. And you'll see this fold when we do um, the flower too. And then the next fold is going to be where we take this corner and we fold over. So all we've done is just fold it into a triangle and then fold it into a smaller triangle. And again, we line up the corner first and then we flatten it out. So we've got a little triangle like this. Okay, and one side's open and one side's creased. Here we go. Here comes the fun part. We're going to take this triangle and we're going to turn it into a square. And we do that by standing it up at a 90 degree angle. And you can see we can open up this little pocket. Make sure you get your fingers all the way back into that little corner there. And we're going to move this corner all the way down and we're going to line it up with this corner down here. Really get that corner nice and flat. Make sure these corners are lined up before we make our creases. Um, some of you, like if you're using a heavier paper, you may even want to crease with a pen. The really lightweight paper you can do with your fingers. But if you did um, our, our tree video in December when we were making our pretty Christmas trees and we did them with cardstock, then we really had to use a tool to crease it. But this stuff's so lightweight. All right, so again, we've got this funny looking shape now. We're actually going to stand up that, that triangle just like we did before. Okay. I always call this like a sundial. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to use my tool. So I stick my little pen in there and open up in there. And we'll flatten him down again. We're going to line up these corners all here at the bottom. And we get them all lined up before we press down on our edges. Okay, so now we've taken a square, we've turned it into a triangle, and we've turned it back into a square. Okay. The next step is going to be where we open it up and we start to make his wings and his head and his tail. Okay, So this is, this is where it, it gets tricky for some people because we're actually going to open it and we're going to turn in the sides. To help us to turn it nicely, we're going give to um, give ourselves like um, some pre-folding. This will give us a crease. We're going to do it four times. We'll do it once on this side, once on this side, and we'll flip it over and do once here and once here. And then we're going to undo all the folds we just did. But the reason we do that is because when we open this up and we try to flatten them out, that little pre-folding step is going to really help us. So this is where the part that's open on the bottom, okay, we're going to line up with the center seam. And we're going to do this on both sides. And you want your, your pointed edge to still stay pointed. So it looks like this. Okay. And then we'll do it on the other side. Again, line it up with the center seam. And we'll flip it over and we'll do the same thing over here. These are not folds that are going to stay. We're going to undo them, but it'll really help our next step. Okay. And everything's happening four times from here on out, it seems like. Okay. We're going to do one more fold just to give us a good crease across this top. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold down my the top of that kind of diamond shape. And then I'm going to open it up, straighten it out, turn it over, and fold it the other direction. And again, that crease is going to help us open it up. So we're just making a crease there that will help us later. And we'll open up all those side folds that we did. I know it's a lot of work, but it makes the next step easier. You can do it without doing that step, but especially with kids, this makes it easier. Because watch what happens. If I take this, 
I'm going to open it up, but I'm going to keep that crease. So grab this top layer. We open it up and fold it back to that side, that crease that we just made. And what happens is these sides begin to fold in, which is exactly what we want. If you didn't do that step, this doesn't fold down nearly as flat. Okay. So we line everything up, open it up nice and tall, and crease it. Okay. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Again, this top crease right here is where we're going to fold it. This right here becomes his body, this little center part of our origami paper. Open him up, kind of like a boat. And then just let the, the creases that you made do all the hard work for you. You just got to make sure that they don't get kind of tangled. Can paper get tangled? I feel like it can. So there you go. That's that step. So this is our wing. This is our wing. And then these down here, these are going to become actually our head and our, our tail. So they get folded up here in just a second. Okay, we're almost done, believe it or not. That was the hardest part. Now we're going to fold in this side, this side, flip it over, this side, and this side. So again, four times, everything gets repeated. Um, and you're folding along. See the, it's got like, he's got legs. Okay, so we're going to fold this edge in so it's along that opening. Just like that. And again, I press really good and I do my very best. It's starting to get kind of chunky down here, but I do my very best to line that up. I had like... 30 years of practice doing this, you guys, so I'm pretty good at it. Here we go. So now he's got skinnier legs. Cool. Again, we're nice and squished and flat and creased. Now we're going to open him up. Watch this step. So I put my fingers here. Do you see that? So I put these inside and tucked them in. Flatten that, flatten that, flatten that. Okay, so it looked like this, and then we did this. Okay. Crease him again, make sure he's good and flat. Here's where we bring up the head and the tail. So these guys go straight up, and they'll stop because it can't go any further than that. You, you can't pull it because it's, it's tucked in there. There's one. And we'll flip it over and we'll do the other one all the way up. Starting to look like a bird, right? Okay. Then we'll fold down his head. One side's the head, one side's the tail. So you really only have to fold down one side. And then we'll open up his wings. I like to kind of pull his beak out at an angle and give him a pinch right there. And then down go his wings. We just take them and pull them down. Opens them up. If you want to, you can, there's a hole here in the bottom of his, of his body. You can take it and blow. It kind of inflates him a little bit. So there is our paper crane. Number of steps there, um, but it's a fun one and it's, it's recognizable as origami. And it's kind of impressive. So I love that one. That's probably my favorite one. So we got little birds everywhere. Ready? Should we do the balloon? Because the balloon is everybody's favorite. So what color balloon should we make? Let's do, let's do a yellow balloon. Here's our yellow balloon. Okay. So our yellow balloon, instead of starting in a triangle fold, actually, let's not do a yellow. That reflects really bad. I feel like you can't see that. Let's do a blue one. Maybe that, yeah, there we go. Okay, so this one's actually going to start in a rectangle. So we'll take our square, we're going to fold it into a rectangle and line everything up. And then we're going to fold it into a square again. Learn how to do this, you'll never be without a, a ball. 
All right. And then we're going to turn this into a triangle. So just like we turned our, our when our crane became a triangle and we turned it into a square, we're going to turn this one into a triangle. We're going to use the same method. So we actually lift up the flap. Remember, it was a sundial last time, but now it's a square, so it looks funny. And we're going to flatten it down. We line up this center seam with this fold down here. Make sure our point is nice and flat. And then we're just going to flatten them out. So we got one triangle there. Flip it over. We stand up our sundial. Make sure it's good. It's a square this time, so it looks kind of silly, but that's okay. We will open them up down here at the top and flatten them out. Again, we line up our center seam with what's going on down there. Flatten him out. Flatten him out. There we go. So that's that's kind of our first step right there. So we went from square to triangle. Now we'll take up these sides. We'll do everything four times. So this one comes up to the top. We're lining it up with the center seam here. And it's open here on the bottom. That one comes up just like that. And we're going to do it four times. So there's one. Two, flip it over, three, one more time, four. Okay, he's back to being a triangle, although we're going to keep him in a diamond because it makes the most sense, okay? All right, so now we're going to take it and we're going to figure out a way for this thing to stay together when I blow in it. And we'll do that by creating these little pockets. Do you see my little pockets here on the side? So that's what we need to do, and we need four of them. So this side's going to have a pocket, one, two, and this side's going to have a pocket, three, four. The pockets are made by taking this little flap here and folding it towards the center. And we just want to get it right next to that center line. Again, times two, right, because there's two flaps on this side. Just like that, and flip it over, and there's two on this side, so fold. And this one's just straight across, so it's, you know, it, like the other times when we fold it in, we tried to line up an edge with the center seam. This one, you're just bringing that point there, and you're keeping this even with the center seam, okay? Now, what that does is it creates a pocket for us, so I can actually use my little pen, and I can open up that little pocket there. We have four pockets, one, two, three, four. This little flap right here, is going to come down and it's going to go inside this pocket. You just kind of gotta wiggle it in there and then squish it down. It doesn't go down there perfectly, but you try to get it as tight as you can in there. Um, and I, I like to use the pen to open up that little pocket. If you have small enough fingers, you, you probably don't have to have a pen. Squish. Turn it over. Open up this pocket. Tuck this in. And then this is the best part, you guys. This uh, this always amazes the kids. I'm going to blow this up because it's flat right now. But in a second, it's not going to be because it's going to be filled with air. Hang on. you got to see this. Really? Ready? So we got it nice and flat. One side is the point. That's the actually the middle of our um, of our origami paper. This side here is actually open. And if you take it and you make it into kind of a star shape, you can see the opening there. So that's what I'm going to blow into. So I'm going to hold it open like this. And I'm going to blow. Ready? Into a balloon. See, there's the opening. Now you can kind of see it a little bit better. Not the coolest thing. So you got you could like somebody other than me could juggle, but not me. All right, so that one's a really fun one to teach the kids, um, and it's got less steps than the crane, right? Because it's really just square, triangle, fold up the edges, tuck things in a pocket, and blow it up. It's like four steps. Now some of your steps you're repeating four times, but it's like four steps to remember. Okay. The next one we're going to do is the most tricky, and it's but it's 
so fun. It's a little flower. You can even get wire, you know, and then you can wire these up. But um, so if you've got somebody that wants to learn a little bit more advanced, tune in for this part. So let's make ourselves a really pretty pink. Give him a pink. Give him a pink. Really pretty pink flower, okay? I'm going to zoom you back down. Hang on tight. Okay, so this one is the little um, daylily that we're going to make. So it starts just like the crane. So we're going to do the triangle into a square, and then that's where it deviates. So, but at least it, you know, is somewhat familiar. So I will blow through this step since you have already seen it. All right, so here's where it differs. Make sure that's good and creased and everything's lined up. Here's where it's gonna differ. In the crane, this is when we open them up and they turn them into that boat, okay? In the lily, we're actually gonna take it and we're gonna do that sundial thing again. So we lift up one of our little flaps and we stick our pen in it and we're gonna flatten them down. Just like that, okay? Now, just like the crane, we're gonna have to do that four times. So, we did that one. Let's flip it over, do the other side. Lift them up. Open, whoops, wrong, wrong end of the pen. Open them up. Flatten them down. Okay. Now we've got to do these two here, right? There's four sides to our little triangle. So in order to do that, we kind of find another sundial, open them up, put your pen in there. You can use a finger. You don't have to use a pen, but I have a hard time getting them open down there at the bottom. Okay, and we'll flatten them out. One more side. I kind of have to flip the other flaps different ways so that I can, you know, have a place for my sundial to stand. But okay, so it's starting to look a little bit like a flower. You can tell that these are my my petals up here. We got two more steps before we can curl the the pretty flower petals. Okay, the first step is to make these kind of tuck folds, okay? And that's probably the trickiest step. So we'll do that. And then the next step, it looks a lot like how we folded the crane and, and it's gonna feel exactly like that, okay? So we gotta do four of these little tuck folds and then four of these. So the first part is the trickiest, okay? So we're gonna turn it this direction, which is like flower petals facing down, okay? And what we're going to do is we're actually going to end up opening up here and tucking this in. Okay. The hard part is getting it all lined up because you want this center seam to be lined up with the petal. So let me show you what it looks like. You got to do it on both sides. And what I'll do here, I'll get one done and then I'm gonna pull the camera really, really close so you can kind of see how I figure this. Um, and then um, maybe it'll make more sense. Okay. This way was the way it was. Can you see that? All right. So come here, let me show you from the back end. Let's see if you can. Can look this direction. Actually, let's do it this way. Ooh, you're really close to me. You don't want that. I'm going to see if I can, because that way I can see what you're seeing. If I do it on forward facing, I can't see what you're seeing. And I might do the whole thing and you'll be like, I didn't see that. Okay, so here we go. Now I got to remember to not talk so loud because I'm like right next to the camera. All right, let's give ourselves some guidelines. So we're going to tuck this in because we know that we need that fold. So we might as well go ahead and fold it to kind of give us a guideline. Okay. And then we're gonna open it up 
The question is, how far do you open, right? And you really don't know until you get into this. We know that we need those folded in there, right? And we've got the guidelines for it. And then you kind of just have to, hang on, sorry. I got a notification on my phone. You kind of just have to roll, see how I roll my fingers? To kind of make that point. This is why this one's the hardest. Okay, and then we flatten it back out. Okay, let's do another one. So turn it here. Come back here. Okay, again, we'll fold a little guide. It makes it so much easier. Because then at least some of the guesswork is out of the way. Okay, we know we need to fold, you know, up to at least where that is. So we'll come all the way up. Flatten out this side, flatten out this side, and then all we're working with is what's going on up here. Okay. Oops. Gotta make sure that little that little point comes out. This is why um, origami books never work. <laughs> Some things just need to be on video. Not that they don't work, but they don't work as well as video. Okay, we got those done. Let's flip it over. Let's do this side right here. This is our last one. So you had to do it four times. Everything's by fours. Get ourselves our guidelines. Open it up. Bring that one to like kind of midpoint right we want it to be straight right now it's kind of crooked straighten it out fold with those guidelines down oh that was a good one look how good that was flatten it out boom okay so now everything gets kind of squished all right because that we're almost to the point where we're ready to do something okay so now we've got we've got flaps everywhere Right, and we have different kinds. We've got this one here. You can see the little center. If I if I open here, you can see it's it's flat. And this one, I can see the center. It just kind of alternates. You want it to be turned so that way you can't see this little center flap. Okay. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make um, these pleats right here. Okay. So this side here that we've been messing with. That side is our petals. This side here that you can't open up, that side is our bottom. So that's where we're going. We're gonna line up the side edge with the bottom. Or, I'm sorry, the side edge with the middle. That would, that would make sense. Side edge, okay, do it again. This side edge with the middle crease. And we fold it in. We're gonna do it four times. So that was the first one. This one here, this is the second one. Okay, now we need to find two more sides. Look, they're in here. There they are. Open them up. Flip that one. This one done. Okay, and we got one more. So we're gonna open this one up. And then you kind of have to flatten from the back side. So you have to open up from the back. See what I mean? It's starting to look like the flower, isn't it? Can you see it? So this is the bottom, and these are all our petals up here. So here's the fun part. Here's where we get to use our pen. And we're going to curl these down. So we're going to take this one here. Put the pen on it, hold it in place, and kind of give it a curl. You can't curl too far because then it starts to pull on that center fold. And we'll flip it over. We'll curl this one. You can curl around your finger too, but I like the pen. Okay, we got to open this up and do this one. And our last 
last one. And because of these pleats in here, it doesn't it doesn't pull apart. That's how come those were so important, even though they were so confusing. And then there's our little flower. We've got three of those flowers that I've made. Look, I've got a bouquet. A bouquet of flowers and a herd of paper cranes. All right, let me turn this back around. Let me move it away from my face before I do that. Otherwise, that's, that's just not, not good. All right. So, whoo, that was a lot of paper folding, wasn't it? So we learned how to make paper lilies. We learned how to make paper cranes. And we learned how to make balloons. Three of my favorite things to make on origami. Now, um, if you try this out at home and you get stuck, you need to send me a message so I can help you, okay? Again, it's a learning curve to figure out um, you know, not only are you, you're figuring out all the different steps that have to happen for it to work out, but also, I mean, it's a learning curve just to figure out how to fold paper nicely, but, but it's a really great exercise in fine motor. Um, and it's really good for those kids and it gets them off the electronics and it makes kind of some cool stuff. So, um, if you have a request on a certain origami thing that you would like me to make a video for, you can definitely do that in the comments and I would be happy to do that for you. Sound good? That's it for me. I'm out for the weekend. Hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you back here on Monday.